You like an old-fashioned Bible that tells you what being a man's all about? I'm going to tell you something. I'm not going to pee sitting down. Oh, those horrible, horrible days when women had no right. Right, let's bring them back. And so I hope you kids and teenagers will just decide tonight and say, you know what? I'm not going to complain about the food my mom cooks. I'm going to shovel up a big helping. And even if I don't like it, if it's the spinach or the Brussels sprouts or whatever that I don't like, I'm just going to just take a big bite and just, oh, yeah, this is good. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, but then why don't you sit at the table and get your food and just be like, ah, ah, yeah, yeah. Give me seconds on the Brussels sprouts, mom. Yeah. Why not coming to me? Look, if he had a problem with my doctrine, shouldn't he have come to me? Yeah, yeah. Or should he be going behind my back and backbiting, going to other church members who never asked his opinion, mind you, never even asked and said, hey, uh, Chris, what do you think about Pastor Anderson's sermon? He just texts them because he saw them on YouTube defending me. So because they were on YouTube defending me, he takes it upon himself to rebuke them for the defending the pastor of his church calls my statements wicked and evil. And listen, this, you know, I know your, your faggoty buddy, Ashton Yakton, lets everybody get up and say whatever they want. But in this church, it's not a free-for-all. It's not an open mic. You don't come to this church and pretend to be a faithful member of the church while you're going behind the pastor's back. Did you ever have the guts to confront me with that, Chris? Huh? Did you ever have the guts to confront me with that, Chris? No, you didn't. You didn't have the guts, you coward. You're like Judas, you want to go behind my back. I want you to get up and get out of this church right now. Get out. Yeah. Get out of here. Get out. What's that? Oh. Here's my Biblical Browns. You're a Judas Iscariot. Railer. 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 Yeah. The simulator. Yeah, backbiter. I don't care if you're saved or not. You don't come to this yeah. church and backbite the pastor without even having the guts to confront him yourself and go around and say all this stuff, huh? Why do you want to be here, Chris, if I'm tampering with the gospel? There are 40 other independent Baptist churches in this town that are King James only that don't, quote, tamper with the gospel. So why don't you go join one of them, Chris? Why are you even here? I think it's a great church. Oh, really? But the pastor makes wicked and evil statements and tampers with the gospel. That's not a great church, Chris. I agree with like 95% of what you're saying, but if I disagree with 5%, I don't think that's reason for me to You're right. Disagreeing with, disagreeing with what I preach is not a reason to be kicked out. You're right. Because listen to me, no one in this church agrees with me on everything. And that's okay. Because we're all different, we all read the Bible, we all have the Holy Spirit. No two Christians are going to agree on everything. That's fine. No, pro I've had people come up to me and say, hey, I don't agree with this doctrine. I always tell them, that's okay. You don't have to agree with me. You're welcome to come here. But there's a big difference between not agreeing... And calling the pastors preaching wicked and evil and accusing him of tampering with the gospel behind his back without ever bringing that to me. Do you see the difference, Chris? I see the difference Get out of here, idiot. Pick him up and take him out if you won't leave. You need to pray for him. This is not Pick him out. Hey, get out of here. I didn't ask you. You've never even been here, fool. Get out. Here. Get out. Get out. You don't just walk in here and start telling us how to run the church. We got a bunch of filthy faggots out there protesting us right now. We're in a battle right now. Get out of here. I need to ask your advice. Pick him up and get him out of here if you won't leave. Yeah, that's fine. Take your time. Now look, if I, I will listen to people who actually are members of our church, who actually attend here, not a first-time visitor. Yeah. Sit down. What are, you, what are you coming up here to do? You want, you want to come take over the service? Uh, huh? Over the service. What, what do you want? What? I just want a prayer around here. Get out of here. Can I get, can I get a little grace? No, no, no you can't. No, no. You, you get out of here. Get him out of here. Drag this bozo out. Pull him out. Hey, help him out. Get him out. And you know what? Anybody wants to come up here and take over the service? We'll throw you out of here, buddy. This church is not... A free-for-all. This isn't an open mic. This isn't a karaoke bar. Okay? I'm the man of God here. I meet the qualifications. I run this church. And if you don't like it, then get out. This is not some church where every first-time visitor and brand-new believer and people who've never even read the Bible are going to come up and take over the service. Not happening. Okay? If you want that kind of watered-down leadership, 
Go to some house church with your Amish buddies and sit around the coffee table with your coffee clatch. This is a New Testament church. We have a bishop here. We have an overseer here. Like it or lump it. And if you don't like it, feel free to get up and leave the service at any time. 50% of people walk out. I don't care because you know what? I'm not going to pastor a oneness cult. Amen. I'm not going to pastor a Pentecostal church. I'm the pastor of a Baptist church. Amen. And if you're not a Baptist, sympathizers, get out of here. You're destroying America. And speaking of nuts, I have a nut here, okay? And this is a bolt, okay? So listen. This is what a normal person does, all right? See, I got the bolt right here, represent the male, right? We got the nut right here, represent the female, all right? This is what normal people do, okay? <laughs> this is what, now let me show you what insanity says to do. <laughs> it doesn't work, stupid. See, but, but, but people are crazy. Right now, this little punk here, this 22-year-old punk, who's been sitting outside our church all week, and he's told by the staff to leave over and over again, no plans to get a job, no plans to do anything with his life, just lazy, sitting on his rear end. And we told him, hey, we don't want you loitering and sitting around here. He's like, oh, I'm reading my Bible and people give me money. Well, you know what? People need to stop giving their money to lazy punks sitting around for any reason. And you know what? If people would stop giving money to these panhandlers on the intersection that are 25 years old, able-bodied, when everybody's hiring right now, then maybe they'd stop standing out there. Maybe they'd do something with their life. Maybe we could clean this city up. Amen. Instead of everywhere we go in Tempe, it's an epidemic of homeless, lazy derelicts. That's right. And they need to go to work. And somebody needs to tell them the truth. And somebody needs to preach them the gospel of Jesus Christ and then teach them to observe all things that Christ commanded. That's right. Hypocrites. Especially a hypocrite who's going to sit on his butt and read the Bible when the Bible said, six days shalt thou labor. Amen. I don't even know why he's even here right now listening to my preaching. I said, don't come here unless you're going to do what I preach. Sit there and listen to my preaching as you uh, don't go to work. Makes me sick. Amen. Go to work. Amen. Everybody needs to go to work from Adam all the way until now. You're supposed to go to work, man, Amen. and get a job and do something with your life. Amen. Not be one of these hypocrites, one of these lazy people. And then look, people give them money and they think like, oh, I think I'm earning my way into heaven right now. Here's $5 for the drug addict who won't go to work. Here's $5 for this. You're not even helping them. You are, look, giving drugs to a drug addict makes them worse. Giving alcohol to a drunk makes them worse. You know, how are they ever going to hit rock bottom? How are they ever going to be like the prodigal son where no man gave unto him? That's when he went back to the father's house and got right with God. And look, I'm all for helping people who legitimately need help but people need to go to work, and if they won't work, then neither should they eat. That's what the Bible says. Amen. And I don't care if that's not popular. I don't care how many hateful emails I get. You can get up and walk out and say, well, I'm never coming back to this church. This church isn't compassionate. Well, don't let the door hit you on your way out, because I'm here to preach the Word of God, and the Word of God says, six days shalt thou labor. Amen. And the Word of God says, you're wicked if you're slothful. And the word of God says to work with your own hands so that you'll have to give to people that actually need it, right. not to give to the lazy. Right. Sorry, I can't stand up for that kind of smut. I'm not going to stand with some country where more than half the people think adultery is fine. I hate adultery. Who hates adultery? I hate adultery. Amen. I hate it. Amen. It's wicked. Amen. You know what? I would, rather, I would rather die than for my wife to commit adultery. Yeah. I, you know, who hates adultery? Put up your hand again. I hate it. It's wicked. Look, I don't even share heterosexuality with Obama. Now, who is Greg Locke? Well, Greg Locke is a guy who used to be an independent, fundamental Baptist, King James kind of a guy. And Pastor Jimenez and myself, we both heard this guy preach when we were younger. And we both just thought he was really lame and boring. Kind of just washed up in the independent, fundamental Baptist movement. So then he decided to become liberal. He ended up cheating on his wife with the secretary. No homos will ever be allowed on this church as long as I'm the pastor here. Never!